I'm happy to welcome back Brian Reynolds from the Butterflies of the World Foundation. Well, last month we looked at uh, plant resources for the adults. Today we're going to look at some of the larval plants. And it's no surprise that many of our natives, of course, support butterflies. And one I was excited to hear about was our wisteria. Yes, a very common butterfly that's found in Oklahoma is the silver spotted skipper. Mm -hmm. And its caterpillars eat that. So it's yep. good to have in the landscape. And of course, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> one that really surprised me were the grasses. I think of butterflies. You always think of the flowering plants, but we have a lot of native grasses I know support butterflies. Here we have a love grass. We have little blue stem and then, you know, it's partner the big blue and of course switch grass and these are all native grasses. Yes. Who do we find on these? Well, a lot of the skipper species, the mm -hmm. grass skippers as they call it, eat those. Mm -hmm. uh, some rare ones like the Arogo skipper eats the blue stems. Okay. Uh, dusted skippers, Delaware skippers, mm -hmm. And then some of the common butterflies that people see, even in their yard and on the golf course, because it eats Bermuda grass, would be the sachems and okay. the fiery skippers. Yeah, and that was another one that really surprised mm -hmm. me. I, I wouldn't have thought, you know, especially because we mow the Bermuda grass, that it can support uh, some butterflies. That's great to mm -hmm. hear. Going back to our natives, we have some really beautiful native kind of wildflowers. Uh, they're not commonly found in the garden, uh, but in our restoration area, we have the partridge pea. Yes, and that's a great larval resource for the cloudless sulfur, which is a beautiful, large, yellow butterfly. And then another one uh, we see in our prairies and roadsides, the ironweed with those beautiful purple flowers. Yes. Who's using that? The American lady uses that, and that's another very common butterfly in the garden and would really be drawn to somebody's garden that has ironweed growing. Well, Brian, I know that another larval food source of the American lady is our Artemisia. Yes, the and uh, one of our Oklahoma Proven plants. And we have another Oklahoma Proven that supports butterflies, the Plumbago. Uh, yes. Who's the, using that? The Marine Blue, which is a very small, delicate butterfly, absolutely gorgeous, and it uses that as a larval food plant as well. Excellent. Let's visit the wildscape area where we have some more food sources. Well, not surprising, we have a number of larval food sources here in our butterfly garden. And this one's always very popular. Oh, this yeah. is our bronze fennel. Uh, I know plants in this family, the, the APCA family, uh, support a whole host of one of our favorite butterflies. Yes, the <laughs> black swallowtail, which is also Oklahoma State butterfly. Mm -hmm. And this particular plant is covered right now with these gorgeous caterpillars. Yeah. And a neat little trick, if you're really careful, uh -huh. uh, that you can show people is to just kind of pinch it just a little gently kind of disturb and see that little oh, organ yeah. that pops out that's called the osmeterium mm -hmm. and basically it's got chemicals that act as repellents okay. to uh, critters such as ants and yeah. parasitic wasps and little defensive spiders mechanism. yes defensive mechanism excellent on the other side, uh, we have an aster, and we have many different aster species. I know they are a uh, host for one of our very common butterflies. Yeah, the pearl crescent, mm -hmm. which is a very common uh, thumbnail-sized orange butterfly. And not only is the aster beautiful in the late summer and fall for mm -hmm. the flowers, but added side benefit is that it's a larval food plant for a beautiful butterfly, too. Yeah. You know, one of the great things, you know, sometimes you can host these uh, Butterfly larvae, you don't see a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. um, other times, you see a lot. Our fennels tend to get stripped down throughout the summer, and that's just something you need to kind of put up with if you want to feed the butterflies exactly. and the larvae. Here we have a common rue, and I know that's another good plant. Who's the giant swallowtail oh, will devour that as nice. caterpillars, and they're very another nice. stunningly beautiful, very large species. And then our Helianthus, and here we have our black-eyed Susan, sort of that group of plants. Two common butterflies that mm -hmm. utilize that would be the silvery checker spot and the gorgon checker spot. And they feed, as they term it, it's called gregariously, yes. which means they tend to clump together, especially in the, the earlier stages of the caterpillar. So if you see a little batch of black little caterpillars, it's probably those species of butterflies. Okay. And with species where we see that gregarious or group feeding, Sometimes that's where we find that extensive damage. And I have a, a great example on a Baptisia. Let's go take a look okay. at that. Well, this is a Baptisia or false indigo. And I know there's a desirable butterfly that uses this. Who's that? Uh, yes, it's the hoary edge skipper. Okay. 
but we've been seeing this extensive damage this year and this yeah. is not the horiage skipper this no. is a, a moth yes it's mm -hmm. one of the broom moths and um just a lot of questions have been coming in about that so i thought it'd be good to show but this moth feeds gregariously like we we're talking about yes and um really shows some of the signs that you might if you're looking for butterflies in the landscape, you might look for... Well, you have the leaf damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you see little bits of specks of frass in there, which is the droppings. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's, it's up to the gardener to decide how much damage do they want in their garden that will yeah. support the beauty that will come later right. in the butterfly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about some of the moth species that, mm -hmm. you know, probably are drab and brown and, and maybe right. not as desirable. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, but you do want to do your research and make sure what you're looking at is maybe it, whether or not it's a desirable species or not. Yeah, just a mm -hmm. quick little search on the internet and you should probably be able to find what that caterpillar is mm -hmm. and then make a decision. Excellent. Uh, a lot of times with that searching, using the host plant will help Yes. in your detective work. Yep. While we're down here in the rock garden, uh, off to our side, there's some of the poppy mallow or wine cup uh, in the mallow family. Yes, we just actually saw a mm -hmm. common checkered skipper that was mm -hmm. laying eggs on the, the wine cup. Mm -hmm. And they'll use some of the other mallows like the uh, hollyhocks and uh, Rosa Sharon as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay, very good. Well, Brian, one of the plants we have here that gets a lot of attention is our passion flower vine. Yes. Let's go take a look at that one. What's not to love about this plant? Uh, just these flowers are absolutely amazing and the They're smell. stunning. Oh yeah, it's heavenly. <laughs> it's heavenly in here, absolutely. <laughs> yes, this passion vine is a wonderful resource for two gorgeous butterflies mm -hmm. that are beautiful both as the adults and as the caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And that would be the golf and the variegated fritillaries. And they both utilize this uh, pretty much extensively. Uh, they also eat violets a little bit, but mm -hmm. this is a great this thing to have. one of their primary yes. host plants. And, um, the larvae are kind of bright orange and spiky looking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you hear people talk about the orange worm that was on their passion vine, <laughs> and they don't realize that's a beautiful that's butterfly. Be beautiful. And yeah. this is one of those plants that might get a fair amount of damage. Yes. Uh, so again, you just need to tolerate it. And that. it's very resilient. It'll mm -hmm. come right back in between the mm -hmm. different broods of the butterflies, as this one can show right here. We saw it earlier in the year with quite a bit of leaf damage, but now look at it. It's yes. really come back and it's beautiful. Well, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the milkweed. So let's, oh, yeah. I think we have time for one more plant. Let's Sounds go check good. those out. Well, Brian, we have a number of different milkweed species in this garden. I know most people think of the common butterfly weed, uh, but we have a lot like this tropical and Monarchs, yes. of course, is what we're talking about. They use all of these. Yes, monarchs and a very close cousin, the queen, mm -hmm. eat uh, milkweeds as caterpillars. And uh, one main reason is because there's poisons in these leaves. They're called cardioglycosides. Mm -hmm. And the uh, caterpillar will sequester those and build those up. And then that's what makes the, the butterfly distasteful to predators. Right. Uh, really interesting just uh, evolution where they've been able to tolerate mm -hmm. those poisons themselves. but. Uh, when a bird tastes them, they'll just drop that immediately. immediately. Yes. Well, Brian, as always, it's been such a pleasure having you. It's been great. I look forward to having you back again next month. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.